USK Stadium. It's the Seattle Seahawks versus the Washington Redskins. Brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Dodge, setting new standards of performance. And by Transamerica, for insurance and financial services. The power of the pyramid is working for you. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our nation's capital. An NFL record being set today, the 152nd consecutive sellout here at RFK Stadium as the undefeated Washington Redskins hosting the undefeated Seattle Seahawks. Hello, everybody. I'm Charlie Jones. This is Jimmy Cephalo, Jay Schrader, the Cinderella quarterback of the Redskins and in the National Football League. But the clock never seems to strike midnight for him, Charlie. <laughs> That's the problem. A week ago against San Diego, a typical game for Schrader. He underthrew some of his receivers, overthrew a few, did not complete 50% of his passes, but during the final two minutes, led the team down the field and threw a touchdown pass. He's a winner, and he's 8-1 and since taking over for Joe Theismann. Now, these two teams have a history of excellent special teams, and one man, Rusty Tillman, has a common connection. Yes, he does. It's ironic that Rusty Tillman was the captain for the Washington Redskins special teams during the 70s, and a very good one. He is now the mastermind behind Seattle's special teams. They blocked two punts a week ago against New England and turned that football game around. And today we will, in all probability, see an NFL record tied as Steve Largent will go after Harold Carmichael's consecutive game receiving record of 127. It's a day he'll never forget. His father's here in the stands to watch the event. It is his 32nd birthday, Steve Largent's, and it would make quite a present for him. And number 17 is Dave Craig, the quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks, and he, of course, will be on the other end of that Record-tying reception. He'll be throwing to Steve Largent, but first things first, the Seattle Seahawks will be kicking off to the Washington Redskins. Ken Jenkins and Keith Griffin are the deep backs on the return for Washington, and Norm Johnson will be kicking off for the Seattle Seahawks. Jenkins on the far side and Griffin on the near side. We had rain last night. It is overcast. It is cool, damp, and pleasant. Here in our nation's capital, we are underway. Two undefeated teams. At the five-yard line, Ken Jenkins. Jenkins outside the 30, outside the 35-yard line. A great return. 33 yards for Ken Jenkins. Eric Lane, the captain of the special team for the Seattle Seahawks, Makes a tackle at the 38. Here's the offense. Schrader, George Rogers, Art Monk, and Gary Clark, the two wide receivers. Did here and Warren, the two tight end. Offensive line, Jacoby Grimm, Bostic, Raleigh McKenzie starting for RC Tillman, who is out with that knee problem, and Mark May. Rogers opens it up. 42-yard line, gain of four. It'll be second down and six. And he is met by the nose tackle, Joe Nash. It is Jacob Green, Joe Nash, and Jeff Bryant, the defensive front three for the Seahawks. Four linebackers, Schultz, Young, Butler, and Gaines. And in the secondary, Terry Taylor, Dave Brown, who has been burned, Kenny Easley, and Eugene Robinson. Second down. moves off to the right wing and comes back in motion. And Rodgers again. Fumble. Turnover. Seahawks have it. And that's the first Redskin fumble of the year. George Rodgers, normally a very sure-handed running back. But the thing he's got to worry about most against Seattle is that Seattle likes to strip the football. Let's see if somebody gets a hand in and punches it out here. It apparently is so. Linebacker from the inside coming in, punches it outside. And Rodgers loses the football first and 10 for Seattle. And that's what they like to do best, Charlie. They win football games where they get the big turnover. And Eugene Robinson, number 41, recovering the fumble of this man, George Rodgers. And as Jimmy Cephalo mentioned, that is his first fumble of the year. Seattle. From their own 49-yard line, first down, big opportunity for the Seahawks. And they open with a running attack. John L. Williams, the rookie, number one draft choice out of Florida, stopped by Charles Mann. And Dave Butts will give him two to the Washington 49, second down and eight. It is Craig at quarterback with Warner and Williams, the running backs. Darrell Turner, Steve Largent, starting outside, and Mike Tice is the tight end. That offensive line, Mattis, Borchardt, Bush, Millard, and Wilson. Second down and eight. Turner wide to the far side. 
Sargent in the slot left. Warner back to the right side, cuts inside, 35-30, inside the 25 to the 21-yard line. 28 yards on the Rambo by Kurt Warner. And he is stopped by Kim Coffey. The Seahawks want to try establish a running game for a couple of reasons. One, they want to take two of the best players defensively in the game away from the Washington Redskins. That happens to be number Daryl Green, number 28. They take him out by running the football to the right side. Kurt Warner is back after a severe knee injury. Looks good on that run. They're going to mark you the 22-yard line first down. Now to throw. A swing left side. That's the fullback, John L. Williams. And Williams to the 11-yard line, a gain of 11, and a first down, and Curtis Jordan, the free safety, is the man who makes the tackle. Seattle with an explosive offensive surge against a four-man defensive line on one of only five teams in the NFL, showing a four-man front. Man Butts, Hamill, and Manley, the three linebackers. Calvin Daniels starting from uh, Monty Coleman, who has a hamstring problem. Okowitz in the middle, a lot on the other side with Green, Dean, Coffey, and Jordan. Dale Green, fastest man in the NFL. 11-yard line, first down Seahawks. Excuse me, they're going to mark it second down and one. His knee went down at the 13. And Williams cut off outside, came back in, fell forward to about the 11-yard line. Let's see if he has the first down now. Olkowitz with the tackle, just outside of the 10-yard line. And it's going to be the first down. Chuck Knox, the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. And as I said before, Charlie, he's going to want to try to run the football, control it as much as possible to take Dexter Manley, number 73, away from that passing game, and Darrell Green as well. So far, it's worked to perfection for them. And Seattle now trying to capitalize very quickly on the turnover, the fumble recovery by Eugene Roberts. Second back is Kurt Warner. Just leaning inside the five-yard line. It's going to be second down. At that point, Curtis Jordan and Olkowitz with the tackle for Washington. Warner coming off that severe injury in 1984. Players are going against him this year, and his own coaching staff say that he is as good as he was prior to the injury. And it was a major reconstruction, a very surprising statistic that he would be able to come back so quickly and so effectively. And because of that long rehabilitation, in one way, he's a little bit stronger because his overall body is strong. Check it down at the five-yard line. And here is Warner to the two-yard line. Going to be third down at that point for Seattle. Charles Mann makes the tackle along with Vernon Dean. Just inside of the two-yard line, so a long yard and a half for the first down. It is possible to pick up the first down without going in, but just barely. And Kurt Warner now is 35 yards rushing and only three carries. He comes into this game as a leading rusher in the AFC. It looks like he's going to continue that progress today. Trouble cuts back, <laughs> leads, he has it. And there you see the strength of Kurt Warner. It's what you said before, Charlie. That rehabilitation process has made him a stronger football player. And there was no way he was going to get into the end zone, but he runs over a couple of people and sneaks his way in. Let's take another look at it now. The handoff, the pitch going back to Warner. And he's completely sealed off from the outside. He wants to get to the corner, but he can't. Coffee number 48 turns him back in. He runs over number 32, Dean, and gets into the end zone for the score. A 51-yard drive in seven plays. It all started with Eugene Robinson recovering the fumble of George Rogers. Here's the extra point. It is up, and it is good. And the Seattle Seahawks have taken the early lead over the Washington Redskins by a score of 7 to nothing, with 10.05 left to go. We're in the first period. Carries that goes back to the 16th game of 1985. Recovered by Eugene Robinson and a 51-yard drive in seven plays with Kurt Warner going in from two yards out and the time of the drive just under four minutes. 3.58 and a 7 to nothing lead for the Seattle Seahawks as Ken Jenkins on the left, number 31, and Keith Griffin on the right, number 35, are set to return the kickoff of Norm Johnson. Seattle with a rushing touchdown by Kurt Warner. They had only nine rushing touchdowns last season, and that is already the fifth this year. Well, they want to continue to try to establish a running game, and a healthy Kurt Warner is a good reason why.
Taken at the five-yard line by Jenkins. And he is dead. He was hit at the 20. He came down back at the 17. Fred Young, all-world special teamer and outstanding linebacker for the Seahawks. And let's check. The other games in progress, no score between Chicago and Cincinnati. Likewise, San Francisco, Miami. Philadelphia with a field goal and early lead on the Rams. No score, Kansas City, Buffalo. Houston leading by three. New Orleans leading by seven over the Giants. Something working there. No score, Detroit, Cleveland. Minnesota up by seven over Green Bay. And here it is, Seattle, seven. And the Redskins, nothing. Washington with their second opportunity in offense from their own 20-yard line, first down. Raider will come out throw it. And it is incomplete. Art Monk, the intended receiver. And Terry Taylor had the cover. He's had quite a season thus far. Not until week three of this season had anyone caught a pass against Terry Taylor. First round draft choice, people usually, Joe Gibbs might want to go against Dave Brown because Dave Brown, the old veteran number 22 for Seattle, has been burned early this season. They're staying away from Terry Taylor. And there is Joe in the red cap and the glasses just on the right. In his sixth season, the Redskins with a 3 0 record, the Seahawks with their best start ever, they're 3 0. Griffin is in replacing George Rogers at the running back spot. And in his second and 10, we look for Schrader to throw. Monk comes in motion. Monk spins off underneath, catches the pass at the 23, and is down at the 26. So he has six, it'll be third down and four. And Greg Gaines makes the tackle as the defense of the Seahawks funneling Monk to the inside. They're going to try to do that as much as possible. He has a lot of speed, a great deal of speed. Because he's so big, though, he catches the ball very well across the middle and is not afraid to go in there. And Art Monk now has gone a pass in 47 consecutive games. And we want to mention that just to give you an idea that Steve Largent is going for the NFL record to tie the record at 127 consecutive games. Third down and four. Is complete. This time it is Gary Clark. Clark outside the 35 to the 36 yard line. A gain of 10 and the first down. Dave Brown makes the tackle. And Clark just a little quick hitch. He goes down just a few yards and Schrader delivers from the ball and gets a field of quick 10 yards. They're going to have to get somebody in Clark's and Monk's face on nearly every play because Schrader and the Redskins like that quick hitch. And Monk and Clark, the outstanding tandem in the NFL. Last season, they combined for 163 catches. And had an outstanding game as a tandem last week against San Diego. First down. Washington thrown 36. Rodgers back in as the running back. And he'll have three to the 39. It's going to be second and seven as Keith Butler, the inside right linebacker, makes the tackle for the Seattle Seahawks. I have, a, I have a feeling we're just for a hard-nosed old-time football game. They're going to run at each other and hit each other oh, all day yeah. long. They want to stay, keep the special teams off the field, <laughs> that's, that's right. for certain. But they've both got big, strong offensive lines, and they want to control the football as much as possible. Both quarterbacks are not high percentage people, so they want to get the running game established and then go with the short passing game if possible. Griffin back in for Rodgers. It's second down and seven. Trader taking a lot of time. Griffin has the first down. Keith Griffin, in his third year, a tenth round draft choice in 1984 out of Miami, Florida. 5'8", 185 pounder. And Kenny easily makes the tackle. Let's take a look at that play one more time. He's back in the eye. He has great vision. You see, they hand the ball very deep, and so he can pick any hole along the line of scrimmage. Number 68, Russ Grimm, getting a nice block before easily comes over and makes the tackle. Interesting point about being so deep in the vision is that I understand one of the reasons that the USC tailbacks have so much problem in the, in the NFL is they, in college, they're much deeper. They can look a lot longer before they have to hit the hole. In the pros, you have to hit it quicker. That's right. The instinct part comes into play when you're in a setback field. George Rogers to the Seattle 49 yard line. A gain of four is going to be second down and six. And Keith Butler again was there for the Seattle Seahawks. Six minutes and 50 seconds, that is the time remaining. In the first quarter, the score is Seattle 7 and Washington nothing. George Rogers with a fumble on the opening drive, recovered by Eugene Robinson. Kurt Warner capped the 51-yard drive for the Seattle Seahawks. Rogers has been held to 16 yards in four carries. Second and six, Monk in motion. 
And Terry Taylor goes right with it. Trader, a little pump fake, drops it off to Rodgers on a screen to the near side, and he has the first down at the 41-yard line. A gain of eight has the first down, and again it is Keith Butler making the tackle. Red Young was also there. And a first down for Washington. They're mixing it up. They are. Schrader wanted to go to number 85, Don Warren. He looks to the right, but Warren slips down right there. He has to pull it back in. Goes back to his safety valve, which is Rodgers over in the flat. It's a play set up that way. They'll hit the tight end immediately if he's there. If not, they come back to the safety valve. That time it works. It looks like Rodgers wants a face pass penalty at the end of that. This is the eighth play of the drive. It's coming back at the 20-yard line. Now at the Seattle 41. Wanting to go deep, far side on a comeback pattern at his muck. Good move. He showed a deep pattern and then came back. He got away from Dave Brown. Picked up 17. He was all alone. All by himself. And that's what speed will do for you. Dave Brown's got to respect Art Monk's speed deep. He's got to worry about him going downfield. Now watch him. He fakes like he's going straight up the field. Watch this. I'm going to go on a go pattern. I'm going to catch it in the end zone. He sells Dave Brown. Dave Brown is going backwards. When Monk comes back to the football, that's a classic play for a wide receiver. Oh, he sold him by about eight yards. Oh, he really did. Dave Brown has had his trouble the last few weeks. All right, Monk, two receptions, 23 yards. The ball at the Seattle 24-yard line as the Redskins are driving for the tie. They trail seven to nothing. Just under five and a half left to go. In the first quarter, here's Rodgers. Has the opening, he's to the 10, a little head fake over easily, and he is in for the score. 24 yards. just lowered the shoulder at the end of the play and ran over Kenny Easley. That does not happen very often. Now for the top. Mark Mosley with the attempt. And it is blocked. The extra point attempt is blocked. And the special teams of the Seattle Seahawks come through one more time. That's Rusty Tillman one more time too. The Redskins must be saying, oh, no, not again. Watch this. Up in the middle. Looks like it's a low kick, though. Got some penetration in the middle of the field, but it seemed to be a low kick by Mosley. I believe it was Jacob Green who blocked the attempt. 7-6. We'll be back. Number 79, right there, who blocked the extra point attempt. The kickoff goes past Bobby Joe Edmonds, and it goes through the end zone. We'll bring it out to the 20-yard line, and now let's go back and take another look at Jacob Green in action. All right, look just to the right of the goal post. You see 65. That's Dave Butts, a defensive lineman, trying to block Jacob Green. He gets that big paw up there, and as you see, it was a low kick. But Green gets the hand up and swats it away, preserving the one-point lead for Seattle. The Seahawks have the ball at their own 20-yard line, leading now by one, 7-6. Steve Largent still has not caught his first pass to tie the NFL record. And he is wide to the near side along with Daryl Turner. And here's Kurt Warner. Hit at the 20, still picks up two yards on the play. Rich Mallott was there. It'll be second down and eight along with Dave Butts. And let's check the games in progress. Chicago now in front of Cincinnati, seven to nothing. Still no score, San Francisco, Miami. Philadelphia, how about that? An early lead over the Rams. Buffalo, the early lead over Kansas City. Houston by three over Pittsburgh. New Orleans still leads the Giants. Detroit, no score. And Minnesota out in front of Green Bay as expected. Green Bay has their problems this year. Second down and eight. Here the score is Seattle seven and Washington six. Craig drops it off out of the backfield. to fullback John L. Williams to the 26-yard line. Good defense is Calvin Daniel starting for Monty Coleman. Let's take a look one more time at that touchdown by Rodgers earlier to put the Redskins back in the football game. Now watch the blocking coming up the middle. He's going behind some very large people, including number 66, Joe Jacoby. Now watch at the end of this play. Kenny Easley is the defensive player of the year in E3. He just pushes him away to get into the corner of the end zone. That's a big, big play by Rodgers. 
And that's Kelvin Bryant there with Rogers receiving he brace on the knee. He's on the injured reserve list, but that makes quite a tandem in the backfield when they decide to go to two people back there. Third down from the shotgun. Craig throws, juggled, and it is caught by Byron Franklin. They're going to run it incomplete. That he did not have possession. He still would not have had the first down because he caught it before the 30-yard line. Vernon D was all over him for the Redskin. And Franklin seems to be arguing with the referee. I'm not sure exactly why. I don't know if he thought he was interfered with or not, but he does bobble it the entire way, never has possession, and makes the biggest mistake a receiver can ever make. He did not get enough yardage for a first down. When you come down as the third or fourth wide receiver, the first thing you've got to think about is get enough yardage for the first down. That time, even if he had made the catch, they would have had to pump the football anyway. They are going to give him the catch and the reception at the 28, but as you say, it is still... Not a first down. The biggest mistake a receiver could make. Bruce Kamats to kick. Ken Jenkins and Darrell Green set for the return. And here is Darrell Green at the 35. To the 40. 45 and is upended at the 47 of the 48-yard line. A 36-yard kick, a 13-yard return, and once again, it was Fred Young who makes the tackle for the Seattle Seahawks. We've got a timeout with 3.34 left to go in the first. Seattle leads by one, 7-6. The Seattle Seahawks with a perfect 3-0 record. His fourth year at Seattle and the best start the Seahawks have had in their career. The Washington Redskins under Joe Gibbs in his sixth year here. They're also off to a 3-0 start. The only two undefeated teams playing today in the NFL. And just six remaining. Which is it? Being just the third or fourth football game now. Rodgers is the solo back. And Hartmut comes in motion. Goes to the far side to Gary Clark. And Clark a sliding reception at the Seattle 47. So a pickup of five. And it will be second down and five. And that's that quick hitch they like so much. Again, if you put a defensive back off a receiver here in Washington, they'll let him go down five yards, let him turn around and, and catch it. Now, what you can look for later on in the football game is a trader will go back, pump that little hitch, and he'll be gone down the sideline. So they've got to be careful. The best way to defense it is to put a defensive back in the face of Monk and Clark. Second and five. And Rodgers leads to the 44. There's a fumble. And a scramble for the ball at the 44-yard line. With that play, George Rogers now has picked up a total of 6,000 yards in his career. Martin Monk was going under the pile for it. And the Redskins will retain possession. That sometimes happens to a running back. You, you go all those carries, 98 carries, without fumbling the football. It happens to you one time, and it sticks in the back of your mind, but the good ones overcome it. That's two fumbles for him in just the first quarter. And the ball at the 43-yard line, it was Art Monk who recovered the fumble for Washington. Third down and one. No question about it. First down, George Rogers, and he did not fumble as Kenny Easley and Dave Brown bring him down at the 37-yard line. Gain of six. And he took quite a hit at the end of this play. Of course, Kenny Easley, one of the best players in football today, goes right up the gut, and the first down is made right away. He makes sure of it, though. Now he's thinking of He runs over Dave Brown, number 22, is laying on the ground, but you know he was thinking about those two previous fumbles. But he covered it up and ran over the defender. And they're marking it at the 38-yard line of Seattle, first down. The Hawks lead it seven to six. He shows motion, Schrader far side to Monk, and he misses him. It'll be second down and ten at the 38-yard line. Dave Brown picked up the coverage on Art Monk. The idea on that play is to get Monk coming back across the formation so the defender follows him. And if he's not looking very carefully, Monk sneaks back the other way. And if the defender doesn't follow him that way, they throw the ball quickly into the flat and once in a while it'll work. That's why they now tell defensive backs, just because he starts in motion across the formation, don't take for granted that that's where he's going. Second down and ten. One of the fans on the sideline. The cooling type of thing. <laughs> Second and ten, five in the secondary for Seattle. Griffin is the remaining back, the running back. And 
Griffin gets the call. About six yards. It'll be third down and four. And both Washington and Seattle, Greg Gaines with the last tackle, running right at each other. Again, that's trying to control the football. Let's take a look at Greg Gaines in the middle, number 56. There you see reading where the ball is coming to. Gets up in the hole and makes a nice hit on Griffin. What the Redskins do, they have that double tight end formation. They'll take Don Moore and put him in the backfield as the fullback and let him lead Griffin and Rogers up through the hole. And now Derek Holloway out of the University of Arkansas is in as one of the wide receivers. Griffin is the remaining back and his third down and four. And the pass is low. It is incomplete. Trent Didier, the intended receiver. Greg Gaines, the linebacker, had the coverage, but still he was about a yard shy of the first down. And again, that's the big mistake that they'll make. Didier is the receiving tight end of their double tight end set. Don Warren, the better blocker of the two. And the fans here want to uh, want go for it, but of course, Joe Gibbs is not going to give into it. Looks like he's going to try and kick the field goal. Fourth down and four, and Mosley is in. He has hit five out of seven field goals. Now nine out of ten extra points on the year with his extra point attempt here block. His long this year is 45. This one is 49. His career best is 54. From 49 yards away, will it make it? No. So Mark Mosley comes up short from 49 yards out. And remember, Washington also has Steve Cox as a long-range field goal kicker. They elect to go with Mosley. I'm wondering if not because he had his extra point attempt block. Either way, Mosley comes up short. The most, uh, the only conventional kicker left in football. He is 38 years of age and had an opportunity with those mixed extra point and the mixed 49-yard field goal to tie Lou Groves on the all-time NFL scorers list, but. Maybe this doesn't have 49 yards left in that leg anymore. No, and interesting because they have Steve Cox. We'll mention that story again. Here's Warner. Cuts back outside the 40. Still on his feet to the 50 to the 49-yard line of Washington. 19 yards for Kurt Warner. And Alvin Walton, the strong safety, who is in replacing Ken Coffey, makes a tackle at that point. And he has such phenomenal vision, Kurt Warner does. He goes back across the grain more often maybe than any running back in football today. Chicago stretching their margin. San Francisco and Philadelphia both leading. These are games in progress. The early games. Kansas City is on the board. And New Orleans out in front of the Giants 14 to nothing. Oh, boy, they've got something working there. And Minnesota stretches their margin over Green Bay as the first quarter comes to a close here at RFK Stadium in Washington. The score... Seattle seven, the Redskins six. We'll be back for the second quarter in a moment. It's capital. Oh, that's ugly. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. That's ugly. <laughs> that, of course, in reference to that wonderful <laughs> hog offensive line of yeah. the Redskins. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Kobe and Grimm and Bostick and Mark May. Kurt Warner, 61 yards and six carries. His average now, obviously, over 10 yards a carry, and he has scored a touchdown which is his fourth of the year. The extra point by Norm Johnson and the Seattle Seahawks leading the Redskins seven to six in the first quarter. Total yardage 109 for the Redskins to 81 for the Seahawks. Time of possession leaning to the side of Washington. I think that's the reason for the discrepancy there. And Seattle has the ball at the Redskin 49 yard line and the first down as we open the second period. And here is Warner, and he will lose a couple of yards. So it's going to be second down and 12, and Dexter Manley, number 72, was right there. One of the reasons, one of the ways that Seattle was going to nullify this man is to run right at him. That's what they're going to try to do. It doesn't work here, though. <laughs> one of the reasons they're going to run at him is because they don't want to run to Dave Butts, who's on the other side. But Dexter Manley, they kept telling us yesterday in our production meetings that they wanted to throw the football to try and keep away from his best ability, which is rushing the quarterback. He's simply a normal player, they say, when they're not throwing the football. He wasn't a normal one there. Not on that play. Mm -hmm. Let's go, let's go to page two and see what we're going to do with Manley. What are we going to throw? And Warner's in the right flat, and he's on the receiving end. Sits one tackle, and Kurt Warner obviously has the hot hand. You want to go to him as much as possible. Vernon Dean chases him out of bounds. 
at the Washington 43-yard line, a gain of eight. It's going to be third down and four. Sometimes a running back or a wide receiver or a quarterback will just get that feeling that they, they're going to have a good day. Maybe it's the first run when they get the football like he did and breaks a big one. But now when this happens, you want to get the ball, as you said, Charlie, in his hands as often as possible. Throw it to him in the flat, hand it to him, let him take a snap from center, but get the ball in the hands of Kurt Warner when he's hot, as he is now. Third down and four. Dave Fred, the quarterback for the Seahawks. Six in the secondary. Tips incomplete. Byron Franklin, the intended receiver. Tim Morrison was there for the Redskins. It'll be fourth down and four. And Vince Gamach is in the punt. And that was a tough catch for Franklin, but I know that so well. When you're in that position coming across the middle, you have one eye on the football and the other one trying to find out where the safety is. And it seemed that Franklin, even though it was a tough catch, uh, maybe with total concentration, he'd been able to come down with that one. And the first punt of the ball game for Vince Gamach. Second, excuse me, it's his second punt. And Ken Jenkins. Is the deep back. He goes for the corner and he gets it. Let's see where they mark it out. It'll be about the 17 yard line, and that's where the Redskins will take over. Trailing Seattle 7 6 with 14.03 left to go in the first half. We'll be back to Washington in a moment. This is Charlie Jones along with Jimmy Cephalo with 14.03 left to go in the second quarter. The score of the Seattle Seahawks 7. The Washington Redskins six, the margin of difference, the block extra point attempt, and it was Jacob Green who blocked the attempt of Mark Mosley. And now Washington from their own 17. And it is Rodgers to the 20 yard line. So he opens with three. Be second down and seven. Jeff Bryant and Keith Butler were there for the Seahawk defense. I, uh, I'm wondering if on first down, if the Redskins are not a bit more tentative with uh, George Rogers since he has fumbled twice in the ballgame, one recovered by Eugene Robinson of Seattle, the other by Art Monk. Well, if they're going to win today, they need him, and they'll need him on first down to try to control the football as much as possible. So I think if that is the case, they're going to have to get back to him and get his confidence to the level that it should be at. And Keith Griffin is now in as a running back. We look for them to throw on second and seven. And Schrader is back. Has some pressure. The throw is way high over Didier. And it'll be third down and seven. Bruce Schultz was putting the pressure on the quarterback. But that's nothing for Schrader. He throws high and low and all around. And all of a sudden, he, he gets hot for a streak and then burns you with about four plays and a long touchdown drop. That's right. He takes off. Last week, he was 16 out of 36 against the Chargers. But don't tell me about that. Tell me that he won the football that's game. Right. And that's the mark of a good quarterback. As we said earlier, eight and one. Uh, on the year after taking, excuse me, for the last two seasons after taking over for Theismann. He's five for nine today for 46 yards. Third down seven. And Art Monk shows motion. Trader has a little pressure. The pass is complete. And it is Clark and a first down. Dave Brown with the tackle. 18 yards for Gary Clark. And one more time, Dave Brown was burned on the play. Schrader looking for Clark or Monk, who are both on the left side of the formation for him. Now take a look. He turns around. Dave Brown is four or five yards inside. Gary Clark with a nice move to pick up a few more yards, putting it on number 41, Eugene Robinson. At the Redskin 38-yard line, first down. And George Rogers is back in. Play action fake. Trader has time. He throws as our Monk. The flag is down. Monk is out of bounds at the 41 yard line of Seattle, but a flag dropped back at the 34, and it's going to be tripping called against the Washington Redskins. That time, Monk coming across the field got lost in the traffic. It's a set pick play by the Redskins, and it works very well for Joe Gibbs since he's been here in his six year period. That's one of his primary plays. Tripping, number 73, offense. Mark May is called for tripping. Van Haggerty, the referee. That takes the ball back to the 28-yard line. It'll be first down and 20. 
One more time, it's Dave Brown having trouble. Now watch, he's got man-to-man -man with Monk all over the field. Monk gets inside, but look, he has some traffic problems. He runs into easily going across the field, and that's what the Redskins want to create. They take the two receivers on opposite sides, run them across the middle, and hope that the defenders bump into each other. And that is the first penalty of the game. It's first down and 20 at the 28-yard line. Seattle leading 7-6 with 12.25 to go in the first half. Trader, it's high, tipped, and incomplete. Griffin tipped it, couldn't pull it down. Butler tried to reverse his field and couldn't get back to it. So it'll be second down and 20. And a reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. Second down and 20 at the 28. Now we'll find out how good a thrower, pure passer Schrader is because everybody knows he's going to be putting it in the air. Five in the secondary for Seattle. That was good protection and it's knocked down at the line. And it may have been Jacob Green who got a fist on it. He is the Seahawk who blocked the extra point attempt. And it's going to be third down and 20. Well, that right claw is having a good day today. <laughs> Take a look at Jacob Green. It's the same man that blocked the extra point of Moses. Right in the middle of your screen, number 79. Everybody's pushing him around, but he doesn't get any penetration. Oh, he used the left hand this time. Sorry, <laughs> Charlie. He's uh, ambidextrous. Does it well with both sides. <laughs> But it so, was, there's a, a situation where Green was blocked on the play, right? Yep. Not very much penetration, but had the presence of mind to get his hands in the air and block the pass of Jay Schrader. The Redskins are three out of four on third down conversions, but this is a long one, third down and 20. Deep over the middle, and it is incomplete. Didier, the intended receiver, a flag thrown at the 35-yard line. Gary Justin picked up the defensive coverage on Didier. It is going to be holding against the Seattle Seahawks, and that will carry with it an automatic first down. And it was third down and 20. A mistake you cannot afford to make in a ball game like this. Just ask Chuck Knox. He's, he's not very happy over there on the no. sideline. Holding. Holding. Defense. Number 56. First down. Called on Greg Gaines, the linebacker. And that makes it a first down at the Washington 33-yard line, a five-yard penalty. And a breath of fresh air for the Redskins. It's still overcast here. We had rain last night, but I believe it's just going to stay overcast today. A little muggy, but a nice day for football. Here's Mark in motion, and he'll reverse his field. And Jerry Taylor goes with him, and George Rogers gets the ball. Five yards to the 38, second down, and five. Bruce Schultz with the tackle. And he'll take that five-yard run, an interesting statistic already in today's game. Washington is averaging 7.1 uh, 7 yards on first down. Seattle, 7-6. And that's what you want to do when you're going to try to run the football. If you can get your average over four, then you come out, you're second and six or better. And that's the position where you can either run or throw the football. And that's the idea that both teams want to come under to get more than four yards on first down so far. They're both doing it. First down by Kurt Warner and George Rogers. An extra point attempt block by Jacob Green. That's a difference in the ball game. Seattle by one as Rogers gets the call to the 41 yard line. Maybe the 42. Let's see where they spot it. They call it the 42. So it's going to be third down. Actually, about a yard and a half to go for the first down. And they put the hosses in the football game. They'll use a uh, another tight end, Anthony Jones, number 82, is in the game for them. They remove Monk and Gary Clark. And Ron Tilton comes in to give him some more help in that offensive line. Play action to Rodgers, he goes deep, and he misses Didier, who was open. Didier, who showed the motion and had slipped behind Dave Brown, he had a step on him, and it was a quick six if he could get the ball to him. And it's a good chance for them to give this a shot, though. This early in the football game, good play. Nice fake by Jay Schrader. He hit the ball well. Here's 86. 
Didier going down the field, and as you can tell, they had them fooled. 41 Robinson and 22 Brown. They the weren't pass, closing on him. They were, but the pass is just a little bit to the wrong shoulder of Didier, and the pass falls incomplete. Nice try, though, in that situation. Yes. Third and short this early in the football game. Good field position for them. And Steve Cox will be kicking. And Bobby Joe Edmund, the rookie out of Arkansas, taken in the fifth round of the draft, who is the number one punt returner in the NFL, is all set. And Cox is from Arkansas, so a pair of Razorbacks team up at the seven-yard line. Bobby Joe stumbles and returns to about the 17 or the 18. We'll give him 10 yards in the return. A 51-yard kick by Steve Cox, and Todd Bowles was down on the coverage for the Redskins. Back in a moment. In games in progress, Chicago is running away from Cincinnati now. San Francisco in front of Miami. Philadelphia continues to lead the round. Buffalo out in front of Kansas City. Houston by three. Look at New Orleans and the Giants are running away 17 to nothing in the second quarter. Cleveland leading 7 0 and Minnesota shutting out Green Bay. And here it is Seattle 7, Washington 6. The Seahawks from their own 18 yard line. John L. Williams. Three yards to the 21. It'll be second down and seven. Seattle now has run on six first downs, as they did there, and they've thrown only on one time on a first down opportunity, while Washington has run six times and thrown five times. Also, they've had more first down opportunities. Yeah, that goes back to Seattle's game plan coming in. Run the football as much as possible. Keep it away from Manley and away from Daryl Green to try to neutralize their best ability, which is on the passing passing plays. Second and seven. Kurt Warner pops it outside the 30 to the 35, the 40, and is finally caught by Alvin Walton. What a day Kurt Warner is having at 29 more yards to his total. And you come up with 88 yards in eight carries. And they give him the ball so deep in the backfield. Watch this. He's got vision for the total field, and he finds it right away. That's instinct. The other part of determining if it's a great running back or not is how quick is, into, is he into his speed from a, a, a dead stop. At that time, Kerner seemed, uh, Warner seemed to be in a, the quickest speed he could possibly get to in just his second step. First down at the Seattle 49. The Seahawks still have not completed a pass to Largen and Williams. But he runs into Dexter Manley. And he will, he may lose a yard. He may have got it back. Let's see where they mark it down. There goes the idea of running at Dexter Manley. Let's see if they go to the other side for a while. A, oh. He pushed his his blocker right back into John L. Williams. Corrals him down. Nice play by Dexter Manley. Second down, actually about 10 and a half to go for the first down. <laughs> Craig lofting one to large, no, incomplete. Vernon Dean had the coverage on Steve Largen. Largen still has not caught a pass. It'll be third down and just over 10, back at the 49. He's a master at running a man-to-man -man route. D number 32. He just, the, the problem here with, with Largen, and it's hard to criticize Steve Largen from running a pass pattern, but he simply turned it into a foot race. He just ran straight down the field instead of giving Dean a move to the line of scrimmage and trying to get by him. Still looking for the first reception to tie the consecutive game record of Harold Carmichael. He needs to tie it before he can beat it next week at home against San Diego. From the shotgun. The pass is complete, and it is Byron Franklin, and he will come up a couple of yards short of the first down. And Franklin, once again, not getting the first down yards for a third and fourth receiver coming into the game, and he knows it too, walking to the sideline, but hey, he's got to look at the sticks before the players run. So it's going to be fourth down about a yard, maybe just a little bit more. A Seahawk injured on the play. We believe that is number 59, Blair Bush, yes. 
He's been bothered by a knee injury to not practice all week long. We'll take an injury timeout. Seattle out in front by a score of seven to six. Just over eight and a half left to go in the second quarter. Connie Kawhi has replaced Blair Bush, but he would have anyway. He snaps on punts. Vince Camacho goes for the corner. And he's not going to make it. The deep back on the return was Ken Jenkins. And the Redskins will have the ball at their own 20-yard line following that 42-yard kick. The score is Seattle 7 and Washington nothing. The Seahawks scored first a 51-yard drive in seven plays. That's Blair Bush that they're working on on the Seattle side. What happened is George Rogers fumbled the first fumble in 98 carries. It was recovered by Eugene Robinson of the Seahawks. And Seattle capitalized very quickly, 51 yards in seven plays. Warner going in, made the extra point. The Redskins counted with an 80-yard drive in nine plays with Rogers scoring from 24 yards out, but Mosley's extra point attempt was blocked. That's been the difference. 7-6 Seattle, Washington now from their own 20. Play action fake on first down. And goes deep to the far side, and it's there, and it's Art Monk. And holding on, Eugene Robinson just, <laughs> it was kind of a pushing and shoving match for the last 15 of the 70 yards. As we said, Schrader might make that overthrow, that underthrow, but he was perfect and unmarked that time. Art Monk once again. Burning Dave Robinson, number 22. Watch him. He comes across the field in motion. He runs straight at number 22, Brown, to make him sit there. And he's got such great speed that Monk blows right past him. Now watch how strong he is down the end. He gives the old stiff arm to 41 Robinson and carries another 10 yards. Mark it officially for 69 yards to the 11. You've got to have art and the Redskins, too. They've got a first down. The Seahawks 11 yard line. George Roger to the seven. He has four. And it'll be second down and six is Fred Young and Joe Nash were there to bring him down. Seven minutes and 12 seconds in counting. That is the time remaining in the first half. The report on Blair Bush. It is an injury to his lower back. We do not know yet if he will return. And don't forget at halftime, NFL 86. And they'll be updating all of the games in the National Football League. And here's George Rogers to the four yard line. Again, Fred Young is there. Chicago, Cincinnati's on the board, 21 to 7. San Francisco by 7. Philadelphia continues to lead the Rams. And look at the third game down. New Orleans continues to lead the Giants. So those are the two that are working. Minnesota and Cleveland out in front of the Rams. Third down. Back in motion. And now he reverses and he reverses again. And Trader throws. And it is to Muck. He has the reception. He goes. He is hit and out of bounds. Back around the four or the five. But if they give him the point of the reception, it'll be in closer. Let's see where the official spotted. He fumbled the ball after he had it. And now they're going to say, where do we mark it? They continue to pick on Dave Brown. He's the referee. And they're going to place it back outside the four. Let's take a look at from the, from the end zone and see exactly why they marked it at that point. He may have fumbled it out of bounds and it rolled back and out there, and that's where they would mark it. Let's find out. Comes across the formation and makes the catch. It looks like he's going to get into the end zone for just a second, but a nice play by Dave Brown. And the ball does pop out, goes out the four and a half yard line. He did make the reception, and it's a good call by the officials. So at the four and a half, and it is fourth down, and that means that Mark Mosley is in. He has missed from the 49. He came up short, and he has had an extra point at Tim Block. And here's the referee. The review. 
by the replay official. The ball will be spotted on the two-yard line. Let's look at that again, because the replay official is Art McNally. Now, what they're doing, let's see, he goes, has the reception there, which is the point of the catch. Then he is hit and fumbles, and the ball goes out of bounds. At the four-and-a-half-yard line. four-and-a-half-yard line. Art McNally, who is the supervisor of NFL officials and knows the rules better than anybody, is saying that he has it at the point of the catch. I did not know that the play was dead. No, I didn't either. That's, they're it's saying it. it's forward progress. They must have ruled that he was stopped at the two-yard line, and the whistle blew. And they're nullifying the fumble. So place the ball at the two, and it is fourth down, about a yard to go for the first down. And Mosley comes out, and Rodgers is back in. And the Redskins go for the touchdown. And Rodgers is wrapped up. He may not have picked up the necessary yardage for the first down. Jacob Green says, I got him. And that's what happened to a football team. They were so excited they were going to get the ball down there. And they can't push it in. This will change, of course, the momentum of the game. But maybe even a little bit more than that. You've got a young quarterback in Jay Schrader. He needs the confidence level going in, getting an opportunity, but they do not punch it in for the score. They come away with no points. And remember, they left three points on the field with a successful field goal attempt, which is if, if it was at the four and a half, Mosey was coming in and assumed that he would make it. Now, the way he's kicking today, you can't really make all that assumption, but if he does, uh, then they would have had three points in the lead. But right now, Seattle retains the lead, and they have the, the ball on their own three-yard line first down. Here's Kurt Warner, has a little room. Boy, he finds room when there's just not any there. Goes to the nine. They are calling on that questionable call, forward progress, and that is the point of the reception. Now let's take a look at it. Now, the thing we can't do on an instant replay, of course, is hear the whistle. If they call downstairs and the official says, I blew the whistle at the point that he got hit, no then this turns into a play where the, the play is over. But obviously there it does not appear that he was stopped long enough for a whistle to be blown. That's something we simply cannot tell from up here in the booth though. And I'm surprised that the fumble is not part of the continuing play. Because what if Seattle would have recovered the fumble? Would he still have forward progress? Under that rule, he would have. Kurt Warner again gets the call. Dexter Manley gets the tackle. And it'll be third down in just about a yard. Let's take a look at Rodgers trying to get in on that fourth down situation. Stacked up very well. Good penetration by the front of the Seattle Seahawks. And he has nowhere to go. Jacob Green coming over the top, number 79, to make the tackle. Five minutes and 28 seconds. That is the time remaining in the first half. It is Seattle 7, Washington 6. It was closer. It'll be just about six or seven inches. And they'll mark the ball and bring it out. So it's third down and inches. With the ball at the 12-yard line. And Eric Lane has come into the offensive set. He is the captain of the special team for the Seattle Seahawks. And the backup fullback behind John L. Williams. So he comes in as an extra blocking back. Williams stays in. blocking over on the right wing and Kurt Warner just tries to scoot through for the inches and he will pick up the first down at the 15 yard line. Now for an update let's check in with Bob Costas in New York City. Bob. Charlie a big scare for the fans in Buffalo Jim Kelly is hit and suffers a bruised left forearm that's what it turns out to be but he left the game was replaced by Frank Reich at quarterback after the x-rays were taken he came back to a royal welcome and he has returned to the game. Oh I'm glad he's back Bob NFL needs him. Kurt Warner after the first down of the 15 yard line he'll pick up a couple of yards on the play maybe three Alvin Daniels makes the tackle. They want to punch the ball out of there with Warner back in deep. They don't want to put the hands in the ball of Craig, excuse me, the ball in the hands of Craig and allow him to make a mistake that deep in. Already over 100 yards in this just the first half. 
And Warner with the last four carries, the, all, the four carries in this drive. The ball at the 18-yard line, second down and seven. And four minutes and counting, time remaining first down. And here's John L. Williams, the fullback. And he's been watching Kurt Warner. He said, if he can do it, so can I. If there's not any room there, I'll find some. He needed seven. He picks up ten in the first down. The number one draft choice out of Florida. Surprised somebody in a football uniform could pirouette so well. He went to the right, he went to the left, and picked up enough yards for the first down. Curtis Jordan with the tackle at the 27-yard line. And be sure to be with us at halftime. Scores and highlights and a review of last week's Dolphin Jet game. in motion. Largen has not cut a pass as yet. And there it is. Steve Largen has his first reception of the ball game at the 35-yard line and he has now tied Harold Carmichael with 127 consecutive games with a reception that started back on November the 20th, 1977. His relatives are here. His dad is here. There's his dad in the wheelchair right there. And they're taking the football out of the game. And that will go in the book of memories of Steve Largen. That in the eight yards that he picked up on the play. And on his 32nd birthday. And this is a play he'll probably relive for, for the rest of his life. A simple in pattern, not the most difficult one he'll ever catch in his life, but the one he'll probably remember most. And it came with about 316 left to go in the first half. But Warner. to the 39-yard line. He needed a couple. He got four. And it's a first down as Curtis Jordan makes the tackle. So Seattle, starting back at their own three-yard line, now have moved to their own 39-yard line. And we have two minutes and 42 seconds and counting. That is the time remaining in the first half. The Seahawks up by one, seven to six. Six running plays, one passing play on this drive. And that's the eight-yard pass to Steve Weiss. say that Seattle has recovered the fumble or that the play was already down. I think they're saying that he was already on the ground when the fumble occurred. And as you know in the National Football League uh, the ground cannot cause the fumble if you have possession when you hit the ground you retain possession. Let's, let's take a look again. Great penetration by Manley but Warner gets a little piece of him to push him outside of the play. And he's seen, it's tough to tell from that angle exactly when the ball popped out. But he had it on the way down. We just couldn't see whether it hit the ground first or whether it popped out before he hit the ground. And the two-minute warning is now being given to both benches. We've got two minutes left to the first half. It's Seattle 7, Washington 6. We'll be back. Monday night at home against the San Diego Chargers. And this is Steve's 32nd birthday. And family and friends are here to help him celebrate. Second down and three. Seattle at their own 46. Williams gets the call. And he's going to get a yard, and that's going to be all. It's going to be third down and a couple. Dave Butts was there. Dave in his 14th year. <clears throat> Boy, choking up. Just think of it, 14th year. He's been around a while. That is a long while. And he's a big, strong football player who they said they wanted to stay away from when running the football inside. But Dexter Manley has proven that you can't run to his side either. Dave Butts is 6'7", 295. It's hard to stay away from him. Six in the secondary for Washington. Third down and two. Dave Craig from the shotgun. Nice good protection. The pass is complete. And out of bounds, it's Ray Butler with Butler's first reception of the ball game. And he picks up 11 yards in the first down. And Butler got caught in some traffic inside. Some of the defenders for the Redskins fell down. Again, it's that pick play that the entire NFL likes to use, although it is 
at times deemed illegal. It worked that time. And describe for our viewers that might not know exactly what the pick play is. Well, it's just like a basketball play where a uh, wide receiver will run into a defensive back as he's casually running for a pass pattern. He just takes the defender out of the play. That's right. At the Redskin 42 yard on his Kurt Warner. And he has a battle on his hands just to get back to the line of scrimmage. And again, it is Dave Butts who is there along with Calvin Daniels. And we've got a timeout call by the Seattle Seahawks, and that stops the clock with one minute and two seconds left in the first half. Welcome back to RFK Stadium, where the Seattle Seahawks are leading the Washington Redskins by a score of seven to six. And uh, it opened up as a, as a wildfire first quarter, and then it's kind of settle down into old-fashioned football and everybody seems to be just running at everybody. It has been. They both want to control the ball going in and doing just that. 7-6, a real wild first yeah. quarter, but yeah. you're right. Things yeah. have settled down here in the second so far. But in reality, when we talked to both of the coaching staffs, that's exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to control the ground game. Now, we hear that so often, but they both felt that this is probably the most important factor of this game. The pass complete to the tight end, Mike Tice, Alvin Walton. Makes the tackle, and Seattle in a hurry-up offense. 46 seconds and counting, as you can see the clock in the lower right-hand side of your screen. A gain of 12 yards to the 30-yard line, and it's a first down, Seattle. Greg, a little play action that doesn't fool anybody, and he misses his wide receiver, Byron Franklin, and Daryl Green had picked up the coverage on him. That's a good point, Charlie. At 27 seconds left, there were a few more at the time. Why go to a play action fake? He's 8 of 11 for 63 yards. Not bad so far. Not a lot of production as far as yards are concerned, but he stayed away from the stakes and completed a lot of passes. But getting back to that point, why run a play action fake when you know everybody in the world knows you're going to throw the football? And this is the 14th play of this drive that started back, remember, at the Seattle three yard line. It was second down and 10 at the 30. 27 seconds left, first half, and within field goal range of Norm Johnson. So Craig fires it, it's intercepted the one thing he did not want to do, Rich Malott. Malott to the 50, in the Seahawk territory with 18 seconds left, 30 yards on the return. Costly interception for the Seahawks, a big turnover for the Redskins. And Rich Malott shows a little fancy footwork running down the sideline. And his days at Penn State, he was a wide receiver for a while. He was a running back for a while, and he shows it here. We just mentioned that Craig had stayed away from the mistake early on. And he throws it right into the arms of Malott. You would think he was the wide receiver at that spot. But watch the move he puts on Craig. See, back out and then inside. That was that training back at Penn State as a wide receiver and as a runner. You played you played with him at Penn State. Right. He was a wide receiver on one side. I was a <laughs> wide receiver on another. He doesn't look like a wide receiver. Well, he's lost a little hair in the past 10 years, and he's gotten a little heavier. Trader to throw. And he has pressure, steps away, and he's headed for the sideline. And he goes sliding down at the 39-yard line. And the Redskins will stop the clock with seven seconds. And they've got a long distance field goal kicker. Well, let's go back to the fancy footwork of Rich Malak. Twinkle toe. And it's Dave Craig, too. Now, Dave <laughs> first throws the interception, then he misses the tackle. It's a double whammy for him. Now we have seven seconds on the board. And I'm looking to see if Steve Cox is going to come in here. Now, he has hit in his career from 60 yards away. And he is loosening up. This year, he has hit from 55 yards away, which is his shortest successful field goal. I think it's 55, 58, and 60 in his career. With just seven seconds left, not enough time to run another play, and it will be Cox coming in to try that long field goal. Schrader will be the holder. And here he comes.
57 yards. No wind. A bit humid. The temperature in the 80s. For the lead at halftime. Why stick the snapper? He's got it. There's a flag down at the five yard line. Is that a flag? And one at the 12 yard line. We had 12 men. 12 men on the defense, they're like a procedure. And he just breathed a big sigh of release. He doesn't want to kick a 57-yard field goal and have something go wrong on it. Terry Taylor diving across, just misses the football, and Cox gets all of it, enough to put them ahead at halftime. A new Redskins record of 57 yards and Mosley's reaction as the Redskins take the lead by a score of 9 to 7. Two seconds left of the first half. And that's Rusty Tillman. He's not happy. He had 12 people on the field for that special teams play. He's also not happy the ball got through, but they came close enough. Terry Taylor made a good effort to try to get to it. He's just upset because he did have one extra man on the field. And if he had missed it, it would have given the Cox another opportunity to kick it again. And remember that Mark Mosley came up short from 49 yards away earlier in the ballgame. But right now it is Washington 9, Seattle 7, two seconds to go. Randall Morris and Bobby Joe Edmonds set to return the kickoff of Steve Cox. from the crowd the fact that it is a new Redskins record has been announced. And this is a low short kick just to take care of the timing of the return and there's Bruce Schultz the linebacker out to about the 40 yard line as the first half comes to a close on a high note for the Washington Redskins as they lead Seattle 9 to 7. punt returner in the National Football League and a very good kickoff returner. We'll take a look now after that 24-yard return at the statistics here in the first half. Jimmy? Look at the rushing yardage for Seattle. Of the 130, Kurt Warner has quite a few. Already he has 107. And the passing for the Washington Redskins, quite a few 135 to the Seahawks 63. Monk with 94 yards in the first half. And Seattle at halftime last week at a minus six yards passing. They have 63 today. Redskins have the big number, though. 9-7, they lead. Swing right flat. Here's John L. Williams. And Seattle comes out smoking here in the second half. Daryl Green with the tackle. And there's a name we have not called very often during this first half. Uh, very infrequently. Green, the man that the Seattle club wanted to stay away from because of his great cover ability, his quickness, he makes things happen back there. And he has been diffused by Seattle thus far because they have not put the ball in the air that often. Second down and two following the gain of eight. The ball at the 36-yard line. Just opening the third quarter. Redskins on top, 9-7. He had an extra point of check block. Swing pass right side again. It is John L. Williams. They found something over there. And they pick up four in the first down to the 40. And uh, one of the things that they are doing is that they're coming to Daryl Green's side and staying away from Dexter Manley's side. Yeah, they do by throwing these quick screens, though. Again, Daryl Green, his great ability is covering somebody downfield. Here he comes up and tries to get involved in the play. And he does, but he's not able to go downfield, cover a receiver, go up, knock it away, make an interception, and make a big return. First down, Seattle at their own 41-yard line. Two undefeated teams. 
The record's 3 and 0 starting today. Williams just keeps coming to the 44 yard line. He picks up three yards and there was only about a yard there. It'll be second down and seven. John L. And remember the L because when you talk to him, you'll say, John, John, and he won't turn to no one answer. You say, John L. He said, oh, yes, okay. <laughs> He's got such great lower leg strength. He's very strong. That's why he gets those tough yards inside. Second down and seven. The ball at the 44. The rookie out of Florida. Number one draft choice for the Seahawks. John L. Williams, the fullback. And here's Williams on the draw. And he just comes straight at you. This will be close to the first down. Alvin Walton, the strong safety, stops him at the 50. He'll be about a yard shy. He'll be third down and one. Let's take a look at Calvin Daniels, number 56. He's replacing Monty Coleman, who's out with a hamstring injury today. He's walled away from the play quite easily by Hudson, number 85. He finally gets in, but it's a little bit too late. He's downfield. Chains come out for the measurement. And in the first four plays from scrimmage in the second half, it has been a couple of swing passes to John L. Williams and then a pair of runs by John L. Williams. And it is third down and one. Actually about a half a yard. Third down and a half a yard. Eric Lane has come in as a blocker on the short yardage, so he'll be off on the right way. Number 37, the captain of the special teams for the Seahawks. And the running backs are John L. Williams and Kurt Warner. Third down and a half. Play action fake, go deep. Redskins tried it in the first half. Warner jumps to the outside, and he is dropped for a loss by Daryl Green. Daryl Green and Alvin Walton, they put Walton in the football game. In this situation, they call him the Prussian Kansan watch at number 40. Lower part of your screen. Warner gets forced to the outside because it's stacked up in the middle. And Walton puts off the coverage and come outside and makes the tackle along with Daryl Green. A big play by Walton and by Green. The Boy, Prussian Kansan, I like I that. Like that. <laughs> that's, that's new. You hadn't told me about that. <laughs> you saved that one, didn't you? Vince Kamatz kicking to Kim Jenkins. Good kick. Jenkins takes it at the seven-yard line and has to step by one of his own players and runs into a traffic jam at the 11. Greg Gaines was there, a 45-yard kick by Gamach. Patrick Hunter was also there. We'll be back in a moment. Charlie Jones, along with Jimmy Cephalo, 11:29. That is the time remaining in the third quarter. What a ball game! Jenkins shaken up. They're working on him on the Redskins bench. 9-7, the Redskins lead it. They have the ball at their own 12-yard line. Their opening offensive threat of the second half. Play action. Quick hitch, far side. And the pass is complete to Clint Didier, number 86. And he goes quickly to the 19. Let's give him the 20. And it'll be second down and two as Fred Young and Eugene Robinson react at that point. And Didier plays a variety of positions in the double tight end scheme. Sometimes he's a fullback, sometimes he's the other tight end. And here he plays the part of a wide receiver, split wide. And as we said in the first half, that quick hitch, they'll take it every time you give it to him. And until Seattle puts somebody on his nose, Seattle, Washington's going to throw it as often as they can. Check it down in two. And here's Rodgers. He just leans across the 20 to the 21. It's going to be third down and one as Jeff Bryan was there to wrap him up. There is Steve Largent. He had that reception that we looked for uh, in the first half. At about the 316 mark time remaining in the first half. So we, there was a long wait. And that is to tie the NFL record of 127 consecutive games. That record set by Harold Carmichael. And he'll have an opportunity to uh, break the record a week from tomorrow night at home in the Kingdom against the San Diego Chargers. Let's get here in motion. Rodgers is stacked up. He needed a full yard, and I think that he got it. Let's see where they mark it. Keith Butler and Fred Young again there, as were a multitude of Seahawks. The quick eye measurement. If they go with the uh, with the linesman from the near side, then yes, he will have it. Yeah, he's got it. Mm -hmm. 
Redskins have found it tough on third down yardage and uh, fourth down and close inside with that big hog offensive line. You'd think they would do a little bit better against Seattle, but they've been stymied so far today. You saw Ken Jenkins on the side and they were working on him while he has a, a cut in his chin and he will be back. First down at the 22 yard line. Washington in their own territory. Redskins on top, 9 7, with 9 45 left to go in the third. Trader goes out to Rodgers, and Rodgers just keeps coming to the 26. That's four. Second down and six. They're going after Jeff Bryant and Greg Gaines, the offensive left side, and that means that he's running behind Joe Jacoby at 6'7, 305 pounds, and Russ Grimm at 6'3, 275. And there's the yardage. George Rogers two fumbles one of which they lost that set up a drive of Seattle and one of which Art Monk recovered for the Redskins. I'll never forget a couple of years ago when I was at, at the Redskin facilities which is just excellent. And I was walking down the hall and this huge shadow <laughs> came out of the door <laughs> followed by Joe Jacoby. I mean it was big. Second and six Schrader to throw far side and it's a comeback pattern. Did he get it? Yes. Art Monk. Dancing along the sideline, he got away from Terry Taylor. Good reception. And this time they're going to pick on Taylor a little bit on the other side. They've been uh, giving Dave Brown difficulty all day long. Here, once again, it's that same pattern. He's trying to get Taylor to believe that he's going up the field. He doesn't buy it as much as Brown did in the first half, but one comes back and makes the catch. Now the counterpart eventually, he will do that a little head fake to come back and then exactly and then up the sideline. Monk five receptions, 103 yards in the ball game for Art Monk and a first down at the 35. And Monk shows motion, little play action by Schrader. As protection, he goes deep into double coverage, and it is incomplete. Gary Clark, the attended receiver, Eugene Robinson, and Dave Brown were converging on them, and there was no fly. The thing to remember about Jay Schrader is that he's still a young quarterback. He spent a couple of years in the Toronto Blue Jay minor league farm system, came back into football, and has not had a lot of throws thus far. He is not doing a good job of reading defenses. Often enough, he throws into double coverage, as he did on that occasion. And that is Doug Williams. They call him the backup to Jay Schrader, but uh, that's really a misnomer. Schrader's the quarterback. There is no quarterback controversy here. Second down and 10 at the 35. The 23rd game for Art Monk to move more receptions of more than 100 yards. And here's Keith Griffin to the 40, a gain of five. First three, third down and about five. Kenny easily with the tackle along with Joe Nash. Doug Williams, of course, as you saw on the sideline at Tampa Bay, and then, of course, in the USFL. There he is. Boy, you know, he's got an arm on him. And a great strong. attitude. And yeah. he had a very good preseason here. Yeah. And some of the Washington Redskins fans that said, hey, wait a minute, let's not get the job to Schrader just yet. But I think he's proven his first three oh, games yeah. that it's his. Four wide receivers. Third down and five. Schrader has pressure, rolls to his right, being chased from behind. And... Monk was along the sideline, so he got away with avoiding the loss. He was really just dumping the ball. But he had a receiver close enough that they could have said, all right, Jacob Green was chasing him. And you can hear uh, those kind of footsteps. Games in progress. Chicago uh, continues to lead Cincinnati. San Francisco out in front of Miami. And see what's happening with the Giants. Well, they're closing a little on New Orleans. Kansas City in front of Buffalo. Detroit and Cleveland tied. And Minnesota continues to lead Green Bay. And here it is Washington 9, Seattle 7. Steve Cox will be kicking. And Bobby Joe Edmonds set for the return. Cox with a 51-yard kick in the ballgame. Has pressure, but gets it off. Oh, it's a good one. Edmonds has people around. And look at the coverage of the Redskins. It'll be down at about the two-yard line. Tim Morris with a great play and an outstanding kick of 59 yards for Steve Cox, the Razorback from Arkansas. Ken Coffey, the strong safety, he started the game, came out in the first half, early in the first half. Uh, he's had a tendon problem behind his knee. It's still bothering him, so he's been replaced by Alvin Walton, number 40, the rookie from Kansas, taken in the third round of the draft for strong safety, and Alvin has been in that spot. And here come the Seahawks from their own three-yard line, and the Redskin fans are ready for it. We 
Williams to the six. Gain of three, second down and seven. Neil Olkowitz with the tackle along with Dean Hamill. And today's telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Washington Redskins and the National Football League is prohibited. Washington 9 and Seattle 7. And uh, Alvin Walton is shaken up and will be coming out of the play. He is, I think he's just dazed right now, as you can tell. You can tell as well as we can. Kurt Warner opened the scoring from two yards out. A 51-yard drive for Seattle at the 10 5 mark in the first quarter. Who was set up Eugene Robinson recovered the fumble of George Rogers, his first in 98 carries. Go back and see what happened to Walton, number 40. Ooh, that's what happened. He ran into John L. Williams. Yeah, he ran into his knee with the, with the helmet, yeah. and uh, that hurts a little bit. You, you ding inside of a helmet, and it rattles around there for a long while. George Rogers came back to score the Redskins touchdown from 24 yards out. The extra point attempt was blocked. That is the, the first extra point attempt that Mosley has had blocked since the 1984 Super Bowl when Hasselbeck blocked it. And then Steve Cox with a Redskin record 57-yard field goal to close out the first half of the two-second mark. That is the scoring, and here's the pass. It's complete. Big play for the Seattle Seahawks to the 26-yard line. Byron Franklin pulling in the 19-yard pass. Ken Coffey, who just came in at strong safety, they went right at that spot. They did, and it was a big league throw by Dave Craig as well. He had it fitted in between Coffey and the cornerback on that side, and it's a nice throw. He's got to be exact here. You'll see the trailer down below. That's the uh, the cornerback, and up top, here comes Coffey over a little bit too late. A nice throw by Craig. And a big first down for Seattle at their own 26-yard line. A penalty-free ball game. Redskins one for 10 yards. Seattle one for five. That's the way it should be played. Two undefeated teams, both with 3-0 and records. And here's Warner. Just a yard to the 27. It'll be second down and nine. Charles Mann wrapped him up at that point. There's not a lot of razzle-dazzle today. I mean, this is old-fashioned football. You just line up and go at each other. It is, with Williams and Warner in the backfield. And as we mentioned throughout the game, they want to stay away from those great players on the defensive side of Washington who play against the pass so very well. There's no need to try and throw the football here. It's still a lot of time left in the game. They want to establish the run and not get away from their game plan. Second down and nine. Seattle trailing by two, 9-7. 5.46 left to go in the third. Craig to throw, has pressure, steps away, he can scramble, and he goes sliding to the turf at the 32 or the 33-yard line. So he'll pick up about six. It's going to be third down and three, and Neil Okowitz was over there to cover him immediately at the 33. Let's take another look at it. The Redskins lead the NFL in sacks in the early part of the season, and they have not been able to get to Craig. He slips away. Got away from man. A nice move to get away from man. Then he has the presence of mind to slide down before Oakwoods gets over there. Quarterbacks are getting smarter. Yes, and he wants to play the remainder of this football game. Very important. And point. speaking of Oakwoods, yesterday, a tradition for many years of the Redskins, they have a volleyball game over the goalposts at training camp. And you can tell none of them are from Southern California because they don't <laughs> dig it out. <laughs> but it was fun to watch. Deep over the middle of Warner drops and he had the first down. Kurt Warner right in the hand. And he turned around Rich Mullot on the play, the linebacker trying to cover Warner. And anytime you have that kind of a mismatch, Craig, of course, wants to try to take advantage of it. The only problem was Warner drops the football. A nice, once again, a nice throw by Craig. You see Mullot, number 57, trailing the play. He was badly beaten. Vince Camach will be kicking, and the Redskins have two return men back, including Darrell Green. And Green's going to field it. Pass his man in the NFL at the 23. And he doesn't even get out of the starting blocks. Good coverage. 43 yards on the kick, a two-yard return, and Fred Young was there to bring him down. We'll take a timeout. The Redskins lead by two, nine, seven. A mild concussion is the report. He has the ice, of course, in the back of the neck. Games in progress, Chicago leading big, San Francisco leading Miami. Philadelphia upsetting the Rams. Ooh. Kansas City by three, Houston leads, and uh, New Orleans Giants getting closer in that one. And here it is, Washington 9, Seattle 7. Redskins have a first down on their own 26-yard line. 
Don Warren, the motion man, a little play action. Going deep to Clark, and it is incomplete. A flag is dropped. Now, I'll tell you why they're going to call the flag on Dave Brown is that he was not looking back at the ball. If he'd been looking back, he could have gotten away with it. And the official also had his arm extended as if Dave Brown pushed off when they got close, but it seemed that Clark simply dropped the football when they got that close inside. Brown not happy with the call at all. Defensive pass interference, number 22, first down. Let's take a look. All right, running nearly stride for stride. Actually, Clark has Brown beat for oh, a second. He, he extends back. his left arm. That's what they called. Dave Brown extended his left arm. He must have put it on the, on the shoulder of Clark, and that's what the call is. Let's look at that again. I thought you could get away with that if you were looking back. I thought you could have almost any kind of contact that you wanted as long as you were looking back. Ah, uh, not, not really. <laughs> I, not not as a wide receiver. Not that one. Get that out of All right. That's Seattle 35-yard line first down. I knew you would know that rule. And here's George Rogers. Has a yard for the 35 to the 34. That is only the second penalty against Seattle in the ball game, and it's a costly one. It takes the ball. The Seahawks 35 and now to the 34. 39 yard penalty. Let's take another look. What's right the left arm of number 22? Right. Let's see what he does with it. Yeah, he just puts it out a little bit, but a little bit too much. He actually pinned the right arm of Clark, and that's what the call was. When he put his arm out, arm out he pinned Clark's right arm, and he was not able to go up with two hands to catch the football. So it's second down and nine at the Seattle 34 yard line. Five in the secondary. Griffin is the running back. Look for Schrader to throw. protection and he fires and it's incomplete he was going to Griffin in the left flat and Dave Brown was the cover man it's third down and nine at the 34 Detroit seven Cleveland 14 Minnesota now in that game Tommy Kramer has thrown five touchdown passes all in the first half 35 seven Minnesota and here it is Washington nine and Seattle seven third down and nine Chuck Knox, the head coach of the Seahawks. Three seconds on the 32nd clock. The snap with two seconds on the 32nd clock. Greater over the middle. The pass is completed at the 20-yard line. He drills Gary Clark. And Gary Justin. Brings him down. Clark goes on a gain of 14 and a first down. And that will wait to rest any questions about the arm strength of Jay Schrader. He had a put in between a few linebackers and he does it very well. Tight quarters inside. Zoom. Just inside of Justin makes the catch. Nice pass. Watch this. He's got to throw it in between a couple of people. Oh, yeah. In between Justin and number 45 easily. Clark at 5'9", 173 pounds, fourth reception for 47 yards, Schrader 11 for 21. And a first down at the Seattle 20-yard line. And here's Roger. Five yards to the 15. It is second down and five. Fred Young and Greg Gaines converge on him at the 15-yard line. Two minutes and 46 seconds and counting. Time remaining. In the third quarter here at RFK Stadium, the 152nd consecutive sellout on NFL record dating back to 1966. Next week, Washington at New Orleans on Sunday and San Diego at Seattle as the Seahawks return home to the King Bell on Monday night. Week from tomorrow night, second and five. Here's Rodgers. And he has cut down a great diving tackle by Fred Young. Made the Pro Bowl as a special teamer. And he has really developed as a linebacker. And that's a Pro Bowl play by a linebacker there. He cut through Jacoby, number 66, and Russ Grimm, number 68. Two all pros in their own right, knife through to make the tackle. And Fred Young has led or tied for the Seahawks' lead in tackles in two of their first three games. And as their overall leading tacklers, you can see the ball at the 14. Third down and four. Derek Holloway comes in. Griffin is in. Art Monk in motion. Raider throws. The comeback pattern on the sideline is complete to Derek Holloway. 
Dave Brown was the man they're going after once again. And the play will pick up a first down. And it's odd that Dave Brown would get beat in this situation because he has the end line of the end zone to help him. He doesn't have to worry about Holloway running an up pattern on him, yet he's beaten on a comeback. A big mistake by a defensive back is to get beat on a comeback when they're inside the 20-yard line. A gain of seven to the seven. First down goal to go Washington. And time continues on his countdown in the third. 129 left to go in the third period. Rogers runs straight into your living room behind the blocks of Jacoby and of Grimm, but he says the heck with that. I found a hole. I'm going to get it myself. He gets barely touched into the end zone. The extra point is up, and this one is good by Mark Mosley, and the score is now Washington 16, Seattle 7, and we have one minute and 25 seconds left in the third. We'll be back in a moment. They wanted to stay close to the running attack and Kurt Warner. Now, can they play catch up? Well, right now it's too early to start worrying about throwing the football every, every down. They still have a quarter and a half to go. So I think they'll stay with the game plan. And as time goes along, if they fall any farther behind, they'll have to start throwing the football. So you don't feel it's time to start throwing a first down yet for the Seahawks? Not quite yet. Not every down. That's for sure. Edmonds will down at about nine yards deep in the end zone. And Seattle will go to work at their own 20-yard line in a hostile atmosphere. Fans very much a part of the Washington Redskins team here. They do get involved. They certainly do. This and I like that. That's, yeah, good. That's I, good. But as you're a visitor, a football <laughs> player coming in, this is a tough stick to play in because they're right on top of you. The stands are very close to the playing field, and it's a tough place to play for a visiting club. Seattle on 18 first downs, 14 times they have run, four times they have thrown. And they have a first down at their own 20-yard line. Craig has pressure and it is incomplete. He had a lot of pressure. Now let's go to New York City and here's Bob Costas. Bob? All right, Charlie, thank you. Injured earlier in the game up in Buffalo, Jim Kelly returns, and in the third quarter, he fires over the middle to Ronnie Harmon. The former Iowa star spins away from a tackler, takes it in, and the Bills regain the lead at 14-10 over the Chiefs. Charles? All right, thank you, Bob. Can't keep a good man down, right? Second down and 10. Seattle's ball of their own 20. Redskins out in front 16-7 with a minute 14 left to go in the third. Play action fake, and here comes pressure. Pass is complete. Going to the tight end, Gordon Hudson. And they'll pick up about seven on the play to the 27-yard line. It's going to be third down and three. Daryl Green and Rich Ballot were there for the Washington Redskins. Now, as you take a look at the games going on now, here's a reminder to stay tuned for the second half of our doubleheader. Most of you will be seeing the Denver Broncos, led by quarterback John Elway. I'll be hosting the defending AFC champion New England Patriots at Mile High Stadium. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen are there. And NFL 86 with Bob Costas will be joining you at halftime of that ball game. And he'll be updating everything that's going on. We've got a full afternoon of football for you here in NBC, so stay with us. Let's see if Seattle can pull it out. And here's the quarterback draw. Oh, flags flying everywhere. Craig picks up the first down if the play stands. According to Dexter Manley, there was holding by Seattle. And that will nullify the first down. And a Redskin player is down as the officials sort all of this out. It will be holding against the Seahawks. And that was a draw from the get-go. Charlie, he stepped back, waited for his front line to clear, and then took off down the field. It was a good play. They must have watched something in the films this week because it's an unusual play. You see that very infrequently. Holding, number 70, offense, still third down. Holding on Ron Mattis. Is that Charles Mann, the player who is down, who is the defensive end for the Redskins. 
Man has been bothered by a knee problem. And you, you know on the uh, on the NFL injury report they have out doubtful questionable probable. I never understand that. I would like them to use a numbering system such as five four three two one five means you won't play. No way you're, you're, no way you're going to play. Okay. And if you're a number one you will play. And anything in Any, the middle two three and four gives you an idea of where you are on the scale as the as the week progresses. So a four you probably won't but you could if you got to a three. See but I don't think coaches <laughs> will go for that. I'll, I'll tell you why. It's good. Coaches don't have a vote. Well coaches don't have a vote. Yeah, the but, NFL would do. But they're still going to mess with it because coaches want to say let's keep the other coach guessing whether or not <laughs> coffee is going to play or whether or not That's Alan true. Walton is going to be healthy again. So if they play with probable questionable I'm definitely out <laughs> they're still going to play with five four three Richard, two and that's one. That's true. That's true. But at least I never understand what doubtful probably and all of that. Neither did the players. No, really? <laughs> <laughs> in the first half, Steve Largent tied the NFL record, the ovation for Charles Mann, who is up. This was at about 316 mark in the, the time remaining first half. Eight-yard reception, tying the consecutive game record of Harold Carmichael of 127 games. And that is a record that started at Houston against Houston with one reception on November the 20th, 1977. And Largent has, he had only one reception last week, he has only one this week. We'll that's go for the record next week. That's right, that's all that matters. That's all that counts. He's, he's that's right. <laughs> Seattle third down opportunities, three of nine. This is a tough one, third down and 12. And here comes the rush of the Redskins. The pass is thrown underneath to Kurt Warner. He fumbles it and bounces back into Warner's hands, but at the 24-yard line. And so the Seahawks will be kicking. Rich Mallott was there defensively for the Redskins. So the Seahawks had an opportunity, but they come away without that much yardage as time runs out in the third quarter. That's the end of the third, the score. Washington 16, Seattle 7, and that means it will be right back to RFK Stadium after these messages. In the third quarter, Darrell Green was hurt. Let's see what happens. He'll come from the left part of your screen, number 28 in white, just as Warner makes the cut. Now, the ball comes out, the fumble is loose, and so Warner, Green makes the dive for it, number 28. There you see him there. When he dives for the football, the pile comes on top, but he's injured on the play. And here is the kick by Vince Camach. Jenkins feels it at the 25. He's to the 30, 35. Breaks it to 40, to the 50. And the race is on. He's to the 30, the 20. And is pulled down at the 10-yard line by Patrick Hunter. A flag down back at the 37. A flag down back at the 37. Ominous words for the Redskins. A 51-yard kick, a 66-yard return. 59, pushing the back on the return. Angelo Snipes, number 59. Let's take a look at it again. The toughest thing to do in the NFL, I'm convinced, is to return punts. You've got to take the football and just, with your guts, run straight up the field, knowing that there are 11 men, big, strong, fast, and they're all running 40 yards straight at you. And when you break one like this, you have such a great feeling because it's so difficult and you've accomplished something. Then to get up and find out they're going to call it all back oh. is the most frustrating <laughs> feeling in football. It was a 51-yard kick, and it might have been a 66-yard return. <laughs> now, the line of scrimmage is a 25-yard line. That would have taken Seattle out of the ballgame. Could have taken them out of the game. Washington on top, 16-7. to Here's George Rogers. Rodgers for four to the 29. It'll be second down and six. Keith Butler with the tackle along with Jacob Green. Let's go to Bob Costas. Bob? Charlie Steelers quarterback Mark Malone comes into today's game against the Oilers as the lowest rated quarterback in the league. He gets untracked a little bit with this 19-yard connection to Calvin Sweeney in the third, and they're tied at the Astrodome. Ten apiece. Back to RFK. Thank you, Bob. It's 16-7 here, Washington. Redskins with the ball, second down and six at their own 29. We're moving on the 14 mark, 14 minute mark in the fourth quarter. And here is Rodgers. Redskins now, they're working on that clock already. As he has the first down at the 37 yard line, he picks up eight yards on the play and the first down. 
And this is the way the Redskins have been winning football games for years. Watch number 38. Rodgers running behind the block of Jacoby, number 66. He follows him straight up the hole. There's Jacoby standing up to your right of your screen. And they'll do that all day long, especially with the lead. They just want to grind it out and force Seattle to make a big play if they're going to win. And with that rush, Rodgers at 100-yard mark in 22 carries. And a first down for the Redskins at their own 37-yard line. And there's Rodgers again. And he'll have three to the 40. Going to be second down and seven. And we have a report on Jim McMahon that he has returned to the Chicago lineup and he's thrown for three touchdown passes. And he ran for another one. It's a tough football so, player. Oh, yeah, it doesn't bother him. He, he just goes out, goes back in. He's a, a quarterback in a linebacker's uniform. They just, he just—he right. always plays that tough football. And regardless, he comes back off an injury and plays as well as if he never had it. Kramer now is thrown for six touchdowns in the Vikings game. Griffin is now the running back, second and seven. Rodgers the last three carries. And he comes out just for a little breather. Warren is the lead blocker for Griffin, and he'll lean. We'll give him one to the 41. There's going to be third down and six. Bruce Schultz with the tackle, and a look at the clock. There's still a lot of time remaining. The score, Washington 16, Seattle 7. Chicago big, San Francisco leading Miami. Philadelphia, look at that with the Rams. Ooh, third quarter, the Eagles. They're celebrating already. Kansas City struggling back against Buffalo, still trailing. Pittsburgh, Houston are tied, as Bob Costas gave you that. And Minnesota big over Green Bay. Third down and six. Jay Schrader. Pass is complete to Clint Didier, first down. 41 yard line of Seattle. Gain of 18 on the play. And a nice play by Didier. They consider him as another wide receiver. Very good receiving tight end. That time he had Justin one-on-one -on -one and beat him back to the football. Let me correct. It was the 46-yard line rather than the 41 of Seattle. So it's a gain of 13 to the Seahawks 46. Most important for Washington, it is a first down. George Rogers is back in as a running back, and we look to see him get the ball here. And he does. That doesn't surprise anybody, but the blocking does as he gets to the outside to the 42. So he picks up four yards. And at second down and six is Terry Taylor and Fred Young make the tackle at that point. Look at Fred Young, number 50. Only in his third year out of New Mexico State. Taken in the third round of the draft in 1984. He was taken as a special teams player. Seattle and Rusty Tillman put so much emphasis on their special teams. About 23% of the game is the kicking game. But most coaches don't spend that much time allotted on the kicking game. That's why they lose. These two clubs spend a great deal of time. Both of them have great tradition as far as special teams are concerned. They will play action. As pressure rolls right. Goes back over the middle. The Didier, he's got it. First down at the 33 yard line. Gate of nine. Easily with the tackle. A very resourceful Jay Schrader. He gets a lot of pressure coming towards him from Jeff Bryant, number 77, and from Bruce Schultz, number 58. They're chasing him to the sideline, but he still has enough presence of mind to wait for Didier to get himself open against number 45, Kenny Easley. Schrader now has completed 14 of 24 for 195 yards. First down. The Seahawks started this drive at their own 25-yard line. They've taken control of the ball game. Mark Monk. Throwing motion, reverses, and here's Roger. The hole is there. Inside the 25. That mark of the 25. A gain of eight yards on first down, and second down and two. Eugene Robinson with a tackle, and the Redskins are relentless in their attack. And a Washington player is down. Is that George Rogers? Yes, it is. So we've got an injury timeout with 10 minutes and nine seconds left to go in the ball game. George Rogers has rushed for 115 yards. George Rogers is up and is along the near sideline. There's a vicious ending to this play. A lot of contact downfield. The life of a running back is not very easy. But at the end here, it seems like he <laughs> slips away and the two defenders. Looks like he was under the collision. No, it looked like it. Yeah. You would think the two defenders would have been injured, but it's Rogers who goes down on the play. 
And the ball carrier is Keith Griffin. From the 25 to the 18, and a first down for the Redskins. It is Washington 16, Seattle 7, with just over nine and a half minutes left to go as Rodgers is being administered to on the near sideline. 25 carries, 115-yard rushing, two touchdowns. And that's Calvin Bryant standing there with the knee brace on and the brightly colored shorts. And a first down for Washington at the Seattle 18-yard line. And they call it the 19. Griffin again. And it is still the 19. So it's going to be second down and 10 as Joe Nash, the nose tackle, was there to stack up Keith Griffin. And this game is being controlled by the Redskins now, and in particular their offensive line. That time Joe Nash sneaks through and makes a play, but it's been Jacoby and Grimm and Bostic and McKenzie and May that have led the way for George Rogers and company. And that's why they're controlling the game. Their time of possession must be much higher than Seattle's. They're doing it on the ground. In the first three games, Keith Griffin rushed the ball five times for a total of seven yards. In this game, he has six carries for 25. And it's second and ten. Later to throw. Has pressure from the outside, barely gets it off, and it is incomplete. Going to Art Monk, and this time Dave Brown had good coverage on him. It'll be third down and ten. The ball at the Seahawk 19-yard line. And there is a comparison of statistics. And it's Jay Schrader with the bigger numbers on the day. Although Craig has had a pretty good afternoon. 13 of 19 high percentage. He did throw the one interception that was costly to his club later in the at the end of the first half, which will out with the interception that set up the Cox field goal. But it's not a bad day for Craig. He simply has to get his yardage production up. They've been going with that short passing game to try to control the football. And although they've been successful in that sense, they are behind in the football game today. And this is the 12th play of the drive for the Redskins have started back at their own 25-yard line, and the clock continues to tick away. Timing pass into the end zone. It is there. It is incomplete. Excellent pass. Gary Clark could just not pull it in. Taylor had the coverage on him. Just a bit of breathing room on Taylor, but not a lot. Let's see what... Tell if the ball was knocked away by Taylor or not. And this is a, a good throw by Schrader. You can't blame this one on him. He puts it where he has to. But Clark's responsibility is to get a little wider open than that and to catch the football because yeah. it was wide in yeah. his arms. But also a good play by Taylor who just pulled that arm down defensively. He did, and his timing was fine because he did it just as the ball reached his arms. But still, anytime a wide receiver has the ball that close in the end zone, he's got to come down with it. Mark Mosley missed from 39 yards. Had an extra point attempt block. This one from 36 yards away. And it is good as Mosley hits from 36 yards out. And is Washington 19, Seattle 7, 8-14 left for the Washington Redskins that led to the 36-yard field goal by Mark Mosley took six minutes and 29 seconds off of the clock. Well, that's the ball control we spoke of earlier, but a surprising statistic is that right now Washington has about a five-minute lead in total time of possession. I thought it would have been more straighter than that to see them grind it out on that last drive. Bobby Joe Edmonds and Randall Morris are deep. And at the goal line, it is Bobby Joe Edmonds. He's to the 10, 15. And is decked at the 18-yard line. And a flag goes down. Anthony Jones was there for the Redskins. And a Washington player is injured. And a Seahawk player is down also. Rick Badonik is down for Washington. The rookie for Maryland. And the number three running back for the Redskins. And special teams player. The flag was dropped at the 21 yard line. Chuck Knox, the head coach of Seattle, Seattle returning home. They've been in the Eastern time zone last week against New England, went home and then Kelly came back for this the game. hands on the return, number 54. That's on John Kaiser. And the Redskins will be on the road next Sunday at New Orleans. Eight minutes and five seconds. As a Seahawk player and a Redskin player both being worked on. We talked earlier whether it was time or not for Seattle to start throwing the ball on first down and more often they have to do it now. Down by a score of 19 to 7 with 
eight minutes left in the football game. They've got to throw the ball as often as possible. And this penalty hurts them greatly because they're stuck inside their own territory at the nine yard line. And let's check the games in progress in the National Football League. Chicago big, big, big. San Francisco continues to lead Miami and Philadelphia with the, it's going to be the upset of the day. Got to be. Buddy Ryan's first win in progress. Yes. Buffalo, Pittsburgh, New Orleans Giants. That's another upset right now, but the Giants are creeping back in that one. Cleveland and Detroit's getting closer, and Minnesota big over Green Bay. Don't forget, second half of the doubleheader on NBC. It'll either be the Jets at Indianapolis, San Diego against the Raiders, or New England at Denver. Mike Tice is the injured Seahawks player. Tony Kawhi continues to go at offensive center, replacing Blair Bush, who was shaken up earlier in the ballgame. And the Seahawks have to get something going now. They'll come out throwing. Briggs pass is there. An excellent reception by Daryl Turner, who pulls it in just shy of the 30-yard line. A gain of 19 yards on the play, a confidence booster, and a breathing room for Seattle. And he goes off to the limp, but that was a great throw by Craig. That's the kind as a receiver you like to see. Oh, yeah. When you come inside of traffic in this situation, you want it on a rope, and he put it right on the money here very quickly. Very little time in the air, and that's exactly what you have to have as a receiver because you know if he hangs the ball in the air, you're going to get your bell run by somebody. Just shy of the 30-yard line, first down Seattle. Right side, sideline pattern, no. They're going to say that Byron Franklin did not get both feet in bounds. And so it's going to be incomplete. Remember, he needs two feet down. There's the reception. One foot. Did he stop that last foot and dot the I, as they call it, putting his back foot down or not? Tough call. Maybe this is a better angle. Okay, he gets the left foot down. Nope, the right one gets out of bounds. Good, Good call, call by the official. Yeah. 720 left to go. Redskins have not allowed a second half touchdown this year. Playing ankle, Mike Tice. He can return. He might return. Flag is down. It'll be holding as Craig goes down, and the Redskins will refuse the penalty. Steve Hamilton and Dexter Manley were there. By the way, it's also Steve Hamilton's 25th birthday on the afternoon, so he's celebrating a little bit too. And something for the Seattle offensive line of Mattis Borchardt now, Kawhi Millard and Wilson. Holding number 70. This was on Ron Mattis, and we'll take a look at that. Third down. That was the first sack for the Redskins. Now, they lead the NFL in sacks coming into this afternoon's action. All right, let's take a look. Left side of your screen, there it is, number 70, Mattis. He's got a fistful of jersey. Yes. No question about that. Manley still gets around. He gets part of the quarterback, though. As well as Hamilton there, you say 64, slotting in underneath. No comment. They get no any comment. better looking as the day went on? No. <laughs> Third down at 16. No, I must tell you. Third and 16 at the 24. Craig stands in, throws the pass. The pass is complete to Butler. And he leans forward to the 31. He gets only seven. It's going to be fourth down and nine. Daryl Green back in the ballgame was there for the Washington Redskins. for the Redskin defense. Here's the second half of the doubleheader. New England at Denver, San Diego at the Raiders in the Coliseum, the Jets at Indianapolis. Vince Kamat will be kicking at the 46.6 yard average in the game. Good kick. Jenkins set for the return, and he'll watch it go out of bounds. That stops the clock with the ball going out at the 29-yard line. So Washington takes over after that 40-yard kick. On their own 29, we'll be back in a moment. Yeah, we talked about at the top of the show, NFL 86 talked about it, is that they have a tradition of special teams. But today, they, you know, they've both been so good. A couple of breakdowns, but they really haven't been that involved in the ball game. Well, they've offset each other. Yeah. That's uh, the least of what you want uh, from your special teams people. You always want to get the advantage, but don't make the big mistake. And neither team has today, although the block extra point by Green may come back to haunt the Redskins if the uh, Seahawks uh, offense can come back and score some points. And the 66-yard return that was negated by 
the uh, by the penalty could uh, could have been a factor but it wasn't or won't be because of the fact that a, a flag was down on the play and there is Rusty Tillman the Seahawks special teams coach and for eight years he played with the Washington Redskins and was the captain of their special teams. Kamikaze himself. Yeah it was not a happy man there this <laughs> afternoon on a couple of plays with the special teams although I think it's probably difficult for him to be pleased that makes a good football coach. Mm -hmm. They never walk all the smile <laughs> on this field. Second and six the ball of the 33 yard line. Washington in command. Can keep Griffin. Griffin and this market for no gain. And it's going to be third down and six. Eugene Robinson makes the tackle. After the uh, first touchdown by the Washington Redskins, George Rogers first. Here's the extra point attempt by Mosley. And this was. Daryl Green with the block coming in with his right hand there. And again, now it's a 12 Jacob point. Green, Jacob, Jacob Green, Jacob excuse Green. me. 12 point uh, difference instead of uh, of 13 yeah. which could or could not be a factor as we go down the wire in this game. And there is Mosley and that's the first time that he had, had an extra point of 10 blocks since the Super Bowl. Third down and six. Griffin. Close to the first down they'll mark it at the 39 yard line. And that's what he needed. Let's see where the ball is placed as Eugene Robinson and Terry Taylor make the tackle. And the clock is stopped with 424 left to go. Now the only way that Seattle can get back into this football game is if their defense does something to get them back in. They've got to come up with a big turnover, score a couple of points themselves if they can, and hopefully here, for their sake, they stop them on this crucial play. What they're looking for is deja vu from a week ago in New England when they scored some 17 points inside of the last three minutes of the ball game, actually in the span of a minute 39. And they did it with block punts. And, and, and the special teams came to the fore in that ball game. And they've got to do it here if Seattle is going to come from behind for Chris Knox. And that's probably what Knox was thinking about standing on the sideline. It happened last week. It can happen again. But his defense is going to have to toughen here and take the football away from the Redskins. First down at the 39-yard line. And here's Griffin. Even two yards to the 41 is going to be second down and eight as Eugene Robinson makes the tackle and there's the quarterback Dave Craig on the phone with the coaches upstairs. Big story of the ball game when they write this one. In the first half Kurt Warner 15 carries 105 yards. Second half one carry minus one. That's amazing. That is. I mean why really? get away from that type of a yeah. running uh, output because you're only Kurt down Warner. and you're only down nine seven. Either at that, that or the point, Redskins just took him out of the ball game. Well, at that point in the game, though, as we said earlier, Ooh. you do not get away from the running attack, yeah. especially when you got a Kurt Warner producing over 100 yards in the first half. Hard monk in motion. And here's Griffin again. And the flag is down as Griffin is down at the 40-yard line. Jacob Green made the tackle. And the clock is stopped now with three minutes and 10 seconds left to go. It's Washington leading by 12, 19 to 7 over the Seattle Seahawks. A confrontation of two undefeated teams and really stacking up to be the two toughest divisions, the West of the AFC and the East of the Holding NFC. 86 offense, decline, third down. Holding on Clint Didier, and it is declined. It'll be third down and nine. Darrell Rogers on the sideline. Now the reason that they declined that penalty, Seattle, is because, excuse me, George Rogers, second and third uh, down situation. Now it's third down, so they don't have the ball for an extra down. And although they would have pushed him back deeper in their territory, right now they've got to fight the clock. There's only 2:58 left in the football game, and that's the important aspect. 39. the ball and as he picks it up he just falls down on him so he'll lose a three yards to the 37 and that means that the Redskins will be kicking Seattle is going to stop the clock they're going to take a timeout right now that stops the clock at 239 now this way they have the two minute warning to help them as well they get asked for an extra timeout out of the situation I would imagine that Cox the punter for Washington will try to kick the ball away from Edmonds because he is leading the NFL in punt returns I'm just trying to play a little numbers with the clock. Now the Seahawks have two timeouts remaining. The Redskins still have three. 
and they'll have the automatic stop at the two minutes so that if you get your offense ready you're out on the field and go. Now if there's a fair catch that, that stops the clock. Yes it does. And so they really will get another couple yeah. of plays actually out of it. It was an interesting. But otherwise he could have just run down to nine seconds and then that would have been it. So then the reality they saved about 30 seconds. Right. Okay. Joe Gibbs on this sideline he's thinking about what happened last week with Seattle. He watched all the films. Same situation a week ago Seattle versus New England. They go in and block a punt and turn the football game around. On the other sideline Tillman was standing right next to Coach Knox. You know there's talking about strategy we're going for the football and I would put my money right now that you're going to see 10 men on the line of scrimmage going after the ball but if Cox gets it away he's got to still think let me not get into the area of Edmonds because they've got that danger there as well special teams as we talk about all day long today here's the place where you win or lose the football game based on what your teams do Steve Cox in two punts an average of 54 and a half yards as long being 58. And of course it was Seattle last week blocking two of Rich Camarillo's punts. And that's the first time he'd ever had a punt blocked in his career. And the Redskins, they've been looking at that film all week long. In fact, they're keeping a copy of the special team's film for the Seahawks just to use as a training aid. That good. There's the pressure. He gets it off. <laughs> he was thinking about it, though, because it came short, wobbly to the right side. There is no question that that was on Steve Cox's mind. Well, that's what that film will do for you. <laughs> you sit and you watch those films all week, and you put yourself in a situation, all right, two minutes left in the game, I've got a punt, and he shanked it. 22 yards out of bounds, stopping the clock now. Seattle takes over with 2.34. That was that, that blasted film. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Now let's see what he does here on the play. Pressure coming from the inside. Not a great deal of pressure. He just blew that. Yeah. That's the only way he can express it. And you're right. It's the reputation of Seattle. That's what made that ball slide off of his foot. Well, you're thinking about it. You bet. Now from the 40-yard line of the Seahawks, trailing 19-7, to 234. Greg, it's there. The pass is juggled but held on to by Byron Franklin at the 36-yard line of Washington. A hurry-up offense. 21 seconds, 220, 219. To look for the sideline pass here. And he was throwing it away, hoping that maybe Kurt Warner just might change his mind and go outside. Craig was avoiding the loss. 207 time remaining. I'm surprised he took that that long to decide to dump it. I thought he'd get away. There's Chick Harris and the Play coming in from the sideline. I'm surprised it took that long as well. In that situation, with just a little more than two uh, minutes left in the game, down by more than a touchdown, you go back and decide somebody's open or they're not, and you no. get rid of the football. All right, 207. And it is second down and 10. The ball just outside of the Washington 35 yard line. Seahawks, after this play, will have the two minute warning to stop the clock. So they have all kinds of options here. Three man rush for the Redskins. Going deep, and it is cut Larson at the 11 yard line. The ball was down, the ground caused the fumble. 24 yards, Larson with his second reception of the ball game. And there is still life in the Seattle Seahawks. As long as Steve Largent is on the football field, there's life in the Seattle Seahawks. This is a catch of an all-timer, of a future Hall of Famer. A big day for him, whether he caught another one or not. But look at this, up in the air, taking it away from two people, and in a key situation. Ooh, ooh. ooh. Questionable if the fumble was caused by the ground or not. We're going to come back with that. Right now, the two-minute warning, but don't worry, we'll have that one for you again. Almost too close to call. Yeah, it really is very close to call. He makes the catch. Now watch as he twists, trying to just get to the ground. Is his knee down there? Now, if it is, then it's down. Because there is the ball coming out. There, yeah. mm. But that's awfully close that because is. from that angle, you really can't see his knee. And we got to tell you, in all honesty, we've looked at it about four yeah. times, and we vacillated back and right. forth on what, which it was. But you've got to surmise his knee was down, but on that angle, he's <laughs> yeah, blocked he, by the defender. That's right. You, he could be. If he's laid out and the knee's not down, then it is a fumble. Mm. And it is inconclusive. Inconclusive, that's, that's inconclusive right. is the report from Art McNally, replay official. And I agree, boy, that is inconclusive. That's a perfect word. That is a good call. First and ten, Greg in zone, and he overthrows Byron Franklin. 
Well, he's getting rid of that ball in a hurry, though. It only took three seconds. Right, and that's in that situation, it's a good idea, but it was a little bit of a dangerous pass. Yeah. Curtis Jordan and Vernon Dean had the coverage. Craig has completed 17 of 26, 185 yards. Suffered the interception to Rich Millot. All right, let's talk about the future for just a two-minute future, yes. but it is okay. the future. Uh, down at this point, they come in and they score a touchdown here, and they're right back in the football game. They have enough time to rely on their defense either to get it back or go with the onside kick, so they are not out of the football game yet. Seahawks, two timeouts remaining. Redskins have three. But if the Seahawks are going to get back, and they need to score now. They can't wait around. He's throwing it away. Oh, Elijah oh, pulls oh, it oh. down. Elijah with the touchdown. I thought he was just getting rid of it, throwing it too high for everybody. Yeah, Craig thought he was just getting rid of it. Yeah. Too. That's the problem. <laughs> what an Nobody told Steve. What a tremendous touchdown. First touchdown in the second half against Washington this year. And that makes it 19 to 13. Extra point to come. Possibly an onside kick, or you leave it up to your defense. Steve Largent with his second touchdown of the season, his first of the game, and Norm Johnson with the point after. And it is up, and it is good. And that makes the score Washington 19, Seattle 14. Let's take a look at that touchdown oh. catch one more time. I still think he was throwing the ball away. Well, I, he probably was in this case, but Largent doesn't let that happen, though. He's he's nearly, he's, he's actually grabbed by his backside from a defender. It goes over, somebody tipped, and Largent still makes the catch. It was over Curtis Jordan. And any time the ball is deflected right at the last minute, it's the toughest catch for a receiver to make because it changes the, the spiral of the ball. It starts to go in a, in a crazy, hazy way. And watching here, right at the last minute, Jordan will come in and tip the ball. It changes the area of the ball, and he still makes the catch. Right into his hands. You see that's talking about staring it into his hands. He never lost his concentration. And when you come right down to it, that's what Steve Largent does better than maybe any receiver has ever played the game. He has absolute concentration. Now, let's go back. It was a 60-yard drive in five plays. The reason it was a 60-yard drive is was that Steve Cox got off a 22-yard kick. And the reason he got off a 22-yard kick, he was worrying about the special teams of the Seattle Seahawks. So it all ties together. But Washington still has the lead, 19-14, and it took Seattle only 44 seconds. 44 seconds is all that it took for that touchdown run. Now, do you go with the onside kick here? Minute 50, you got two timeouts left. Or do you gamble on your defense? No, I think I'd gamble on my defense if I was Seattle. A good kick down the field. Uh, the Redskins are prepared for an onside kick, but here I think I would go down the field. It's a tough position to be in, waiting for this kick to come down when you're on this front line. And Jenkins goes out of bounds and stops the clock at 1.48. Major mental error. And now for an update, let's go to New York and Bob Costas. Wait a minute, we may not be going to New York. Phones are ringing, we're going to stay right here. All right, sorry about that, Bob. You'll be seeing Bob throughout the second half of the doubleheader. And at halftime. And at halftime of the second game. Oh, yeah. 148 left to go. Washington has the ball on their own 26. First down. Seattle with two timeouts left. But stepping out of bounds is not that big a deal because the clock would have stopped on, on the exchange anyway. And Griffin with a yard. And Seattle's going to stop the clock right here. Now let's go to New York. And here's Bob Costas. Bob? All right, Charlie, this time it's for real. In Buffalo, Kansas City's Todd Blackledge with his second TD pass of the game. Little flip here to the tight end, Paul Kaufman. He tumbles in. The point after ties it at 17. And Kansas City has the ball back now with about two minutes left. Okay, thank you, Bob. And here is the situation as far as timeouts are concerned. Our thanks to Joe Band, Chick Beaker, Mitch Marcus, Rick Clea, and Ron Lux all working with us here. Ross Schneiderman in complete control of all of our statistics. And it's interesting, it's been a game that statistics have been important, and some games are not all that important, but they, they have 
really helped to tell the story here. They have. You look at uh, Kurt Warner in the first half. Big numbers for Seattle in the running attack. Shut out completely during the second half. And you look at Craig. Craig has been up in the air, up and down. But now in the second half, threw the ball well when he had to. Got the touchdown catch out of <laughs> Steve Largent when he needed it. And then you look at Art Monk. Art Monk has not been heard of here in this fourth quarter right. lately either. But that is probably because Washington has tried to run the football and try to wear down some of that clock. Second down and 10. The ball at the Washington 26 yard line. 141. The time remaining in the game. And the Seahawks have one timeout left. Griffin goes to the 30 yard line so he has four yards and it's going to be third down and six. You take your last time out here or do you wait. Well I would take it the last time out here you take it here you stopped him on that uh, final third down situation you get the ball back maybe with a minute left in the football game and then you can use your sideline patterns. The difference is is that Seattle's down by five points. If you're down by a field goal or less you have to save that last time out to be able to get your team on the field to kick it. That does not apply here. Trailing by five, 1914. Five seconds on the 30 second clock, three seconds. And they take the snap with two seconds. And here's Griffin, and he stumbles, he is down. Now they'll take the timeout. With 55 seconds, 54 seconds on the clock. Keith Butler with the tackle. And don't forget that Cox had a 22 yard punt the last time out. We'll be back. The Redskins have three, 54 seconds left. Steve Cox to kick and remember he had only a 22 yard of the last time and the Seahawks are bringing everybody. Here they come. He gets it away. Great kick under pressure. Edmonds now with the return at the 24. He gets past one man. And that's all he gets. It's going to be a long drive for Seattle as it was Terry Orr the coverage team a 48 yard kick under great pressure nine yards on the return. And 44 seconds left. Seattle at their own 33 yard line. First down. No timeouts left. That means they have to go to the sideline patterns all the time, or they have to go all the way downfield. That's the only two choices they have. Forget about the middle of the field here. receivers for the Seahawks is jumping by an offensive lineman and it is Ron Mattis who took that false step as you know once you get set tackle to tackle three or four point stance you cannot move false start Cost you five. that's the bad news good news is from the Seahawks standpoint that the clock had not started goes with a snap so it's first down 15 at the Seattle 28. In penalties, Seattle only five for six and nine, Washington one for ten. Seven in the secondary for the Redskins. Greg rolls right, then he throws, and it's there, and it is Byron Franklin. He's got to get outside. 49 yard line of Washington. No timeouts, 31 and counting, you can see. And Chuck says, hurry up, let's get it going. Now they'll just throw it outside. That stops the clock. 20 seconds. And that, uh, that all encompassed took 24 seconds. That's a lot of time. It is a lot of time. That's the problem with throwing the ball in the middle of the field. Actually, Craig had very little choice there. It's either get rid of it out of bounds right now or find the open receiver who happened to be Franklin in the middle of the field. Franklin's reception was good for 23 yards. Second down and 10 with 20 seconds left, trailing by five. The burner is Daryl Turner, number 81. He's wide to the near side. Greg goes right side. And it is incomplete. He was going to Byron Franklin. Vernon Dean and Curtis Jordan were there. 16 seconds left. 
If the pass had been completed, he's not near the sideline. No, he's not. And, and if, if that happens, they, time may run out before they get everybody back to the line of scrimmage. Here it is here, down the middle of the field. They're going to give them the things in the middle of the field. However, it's pretty good coverage there. I don't know why Craig would try to throw the ball in that tight coverage and in the middle of the field under those circumstances. He's either got to come back, make the decision to throw it out of bounds, or find a receiver on the sideline or in the end zone. Third down and 10. Darrell Turner, the deep threat, has caught a touchdown for every three receptions in his NFL career. Craig, here's Turner on the sideline, and he misses him. He goes way high, and there's 10 seconds. That took six. Coffee and friends had the coverage, but at least he was working the sideline. Yes, he was, and now with 10 seconds left, they have one more shot to go down the field. If not, they've got to go to that Hell Mallory pass and throw it up into the corner of the end zone. Hale Largent? Hale Largent is a good choice. Yeah. Hale Turner? You know, <laughs> Hale, 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 the gang's all here. Redskins are going to set up at five minutes in the end zone, too. They know the situation. Right. The Redskins have to make sure that they keep every Seattle Seahawk in front of them. Don't let anybody get behind you, especially those back three safeties. They're going to line the end zone and not allow anyone in there. There it is. Redskins have the interception. And the ball game. Washington, their record is 4-0. The last time they started 4-0, they went to the Super Bowl. Joe Gibbs and Chuck Knox, the two head coaches. And George Rogers, who you saw, what a workhorse he has been. And Dave Craig of the Seattle Seahawks. Boy, this game was just the way everybody expected it to be. A thriller and tough all the way. It was. It came right down to the last couple of seconds in Seattle. Although it seemed in the fourth quarter they were out of it, they came back and made it exciting at the very end. And let's take a look at the... Hail Seattle Seahawks into the corner. There's Largent coming down to the middle. An interesting aspect is that Kenny Easley is in there on offense trying to make a catch. That's because you put your three best athletic people down there because they have to go up and try to take it away. There you see 45 Easley trying to go up and getting it. But Bowles comes down with the interception. Todd Bowles with the interception as the game comes to a close. The final score once again, Washington 19, Seattle 14.